Hey guys, my name is Meads. Welcome to my channel. This is another segment for life lessons, and we're going to talk about collecting, or the hobby of collecting. <clears throat> and that's pretty much why the I have a couple of uh, figures in part of us, and I'll explain that in a bit. So first off, why don't we start the how someone will uh, get into collecting. Um, for me, sometimes uh, it's usually with animation or a cartoon that I really like and I look into the toy the toy line. Action figures or even mall kits and they have, well they usually re release a couple of them from the show and I really love the show and I want to have something tangible something I can decorate my room with that's why I get them. And sometimes uh, <laughs> I mean if one is not enough you gotta have you know all of them you gotta collect them. So that usually how it goes or if your friends or your peers start collecting something and you kind of want to go in with a crowd that's another reason and I think that's mostly uh, the main reason for collecting a good example is Pokemon cards first time I saw Pokemon cards I wasn't really into them and like why would I buy this why would I spend I think at that time like three or four dollars for a booster pack and it's just cardboard. I mean, I'd rather spend that money for food, right? <laughs> or actually save up to or buy a video game. But, uh, you know, I'm not, I wasn't too sure at that time, you know, if I even want to start that. I was like, eh, I think it's a waste of money. And it probably is. But one time, a family, uh, a family friend, their son um, is into them or actually started uh, collecting them. And he gave me a booster pack. It's one of the first uh, booster packs. I think this one just Pokemon just came out in America, or I think it might be having it several months already. But he gave me one of the original booster packs, and to my surprise, and actually I wasn't really aware, I got a Venusaur, the holographic Venusaur, and that's that's actually a, you know a big thing. Um, uh, it's it's one of the rare ones. You know the first three Pokemon you have the Charizard, Blastoise, and Venusaur. Although I think a lot of people want to get the Charizard. <laughs> and that got me started. And uh, in, in school, everyone is talking about Pokemon cards, starting to collect them. And, and pretty much I got hooked in. And a little did I know I spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars trying to collect them all. <laughs> but uh, I mean, it, it also in respect with the, you know, collecting cards, it's. I find the enjoyment of looking at the illustration when when you buy a trading card it's it's not just a card you know I mean you can play with it but I think it's appreciating the artwork that someone has put into and in making that design you see in the from the card so that's one thing I really like and as time moves on I move to magic the gathering and the same thing those how the magic cards have a tremendous amount of artwork put into them and it's really great and it's probably why I I collect them then uh, later past uh, I kind of moved on <laughs> I went to you know just play uh, video games and um, a bit of a fast forward now I'm back to collecting figures um, this is something that I I wouldn't think I'll be doing uh, for one it's a very 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 expensive hobby <laughs> and uh, either you, you have a straight a steady stream of cash flow meaning to say that uh, your parents are letting you buy these figures or you have a job so that's another thing if you really like collecting stuff eh, start looking for a, a good paying job something to support your hobby or find ways to earn extra cash <laughs> But uh, looking at this, um, I found myself, um, I pretty much got sucked into it and it's one thing to collect uh, one series, but it's another to start collecting multiple ones. Um, as you can see in front of us, we have Godzilla, we have Gundams, and also we have Figmas. And I got to the point that I'm collecting several lines now. And it's actually kind of... It's kind of scary. Um, 
because right in front of us it's probably about two hundred dollars worth of uh, merchandise or even more um, because some of them are rare or the value just went up like for this uh, guy uh, this is the Mecha Godzilla with the Garuda Garuda is uh, exclusive and you cannot find that easily these days you may have to go through a you know some I don't know who's gonna let go of their Garuda but uh, it's actually a web exclusive that I got from a middleman because they don't really sell that right straight to America well lately they've been doing that with the uh, recent uh, Godzilla exclusives but this one you can't so that's hard to find next one is the Baton Presto SEM uh, prototype Gundam same thing they don't have that uh, readily available for us I have to hunt that down and the first time I saw it the time I got it it took a year or so and same thing with this I guy, I guy um, it's actually you can easily find these but for me I had to buy a whole box of them to complete set just to get this guy because I like to collect the other ones also and there's the fusion work um, Gundams which are pretty cool I like them and we also have Figmas here we have the Dead Master and Black Gold Soul <laughs> and by the time I got into the Black Rock Shooter Figma line I was a bit a little late but not quite um, mainly because um, all of these are really expensive now or hard to get the only way you can get them cheap is if someone's let, are willing to let go of their collection so uh, it took me qu quite some time <laughs> to get them and sometimes it's a matter of luck trying to collect uh, the, the things that you missed out and another thing is for the new things that are coming out do you pre-order them because you don't know if they're gonna uh, I mean you don't know the demand sometimes are they gonna sold out? I mean for Figmas uh, it's usually a case they hardly re-release any Figmas so once they're out they're out and you have to go through again um, other uh, um, other sellers are have them in stock still or through someone having a second hand so that's a, a really interesting part of um, you know, collecting pretty much is uh, trying to find which one is more in demand or while well, you're hoping the ones you like are not exclusive else it's gonna be expensive or hard to find <laughs> and another thing I want to talk about is you know sometimes it's just the act of buying you know I, I find it very interesting that sometimes I enjoy the act of hunting it online you know trying to find the best deals just the thrill of finding a good deal it's, it's it's very enjoyable and actually quite addicting and sometimes once I got a figure I'm moving on to the next one which one I want to get next and I actually really didn't quite uh, appreciate the figure once I got it it's just the idea of being able to get it and it's actually I find that you know very interesting and I find myself doing that quite a lot so it's it's bad <laughs> and also I heard of the impulse buying um, syndrome or you know something cool come out and just buy it and actually have been follow prey on that one but a uh, bootleg f uh, Figma the strength and the white rock shooter I, I should have done my research but you always ha I mean doing research uh, takes a time some time and sometimes you don't have the time you always this struggle between you know, getting it now than later. So that's something I'm always, you know, have to battle with myself. Like, I, is this something I can get later on, or is it something I don't really need at all? And you know, lately as my question you know, grow bigger and bigger, I have to become more selective. Like right now for the Black Rock Shooter, I'm starting to accumulate a lot of the Black Rock Shooter herself and I mean the only thing I don't have right now uh, for the ones released so far is the original one but I already have the BRS 2035 the, the game version so should I even get the first one if I already have a an iteration of her also I have the Black Rock Shooter Beast so 
same thing uh, with this one I I just like the prototype and I do have the real type and I really don't need a uh, regular Gundam and that's why I, I traded out with the uh, first Z so it's one of those that uh, I have to become more selective and and the same way um you know it kind of helps out with other people and helps you to um trade and I think that's uh you know the whole point of you know figure collecting is you you share them with other people and I think I thought about my idea before having a, a club for figure collecting where you can go in and share your figures yeah I forgot which uh, which uh, which video I made that discussion, but I'm not gonna discuss it here. <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna make the video too long. All right, and I think the next part I'm gonna talk about is when does it stop? See, that's a uh, another good topic to talk about is when's a good time to stop um, on a certain line or stop figure collecting, and I think the one of the few factors that limits us from doing that is I guess number one is money <laughs> once you start uh, spending your money on something more important your collection has to stop right I think the next big one is space you, well obviously if you don't have any space to store them it's you shouldn't be getting them else you're just hoarding and again it's not it's not great to display or bunch up all your figures at one location like right now it's a little cluttered right I mean if I only have uh, the black rock shooter figmas here they look great but um, I have like five things here and it's a little cluttered and lately my shelves are starting to look like that so I have to store some of them and rotate them from time to time to... and I wish I could have a better way of organizing my collection and I guess another thing I want to talk about is selling your collection. Pretty much you're going to purge. <laughs> it's something I thought about before and something that I kind of want to do but at the same time I don't know if I should do that yet. Um, it, It's really tough um, to let go of a collection especially if something you work hard to get the figures you know through your when you go figure hunting. And it's hard to let go. Um, I actually have a certain uh, figures that, like this guy's here. I don't know if I'm gonna let them go anytime soon because it took me a while to get them, and uh, I just love the anime. And uh, same thing with the prototype. I mean, that I'm not gonna. I'm not even thinking of selling because it's a great figure. Plus, it's you know, it took me hard. It took me a while to get it. So it's it's one of those that uh, you know kind of I was you know it's in the back of my head. I'm thinking about you know I have to sell some of my figures to make space for new ones. And going with that, new things. You know lately uh, I've been finding or I've already been realizing this uh, for quite some time that there's always something new. Even if you miss out on let's say you miss out on Block Rock Shooter. On Figmas, there's going to be a new set of Figmas, and which you can collect. So, in some sense, even if you miss out on something, there's always going to be more to collect. And but it's usually you know the pricing is usually by supply and demand. <laughs> the old stuff are always expensive. The new ones are always cheaper. Well, for the most part. And let's see. Oh, I just want to add something about selling these guys. Uh, I find it actually quite hard to sell this, um, especially for the small ones. I mean, if you were to ship them, what, that's going to cost you 5 15 bucks to send this out? And what if you're just selling it for 30 bucks? So some guy will have to pay $15, uh, $45 to get the figure, which originally cost $30. So you have that, you know, that price range, and people don't really think of you know buying figures with added shipping. They always think that oh, 
supposed to be thirty dollars, thirty dollars, and actually I think we're getting we're getting pampered by eBay or Amazon where they have free shipping. I mean those are great, but I mean if you are selling this, I mean from your own collection, you have to charge it shipping, and I think that's probably another hindrance. Well, not only that, it's a uh, time consuming and you have to do a lot of effort of sending them out it's probably why one would not sell their collection yeah <laughs> it takes a lot of effort um let's see what else can I talk about All right now I've been talking about the figures uh, for the most part and moving back on mall kits um I just wanna quickly go over mall kits and my opinions on it um, collecting mall kits is a uh, it's a fun way, uh, or it's, it's part of the hobby itself. Um, if you have Gundams, um, you want to collect all the double O suits, or if you have the Master Grade uh, Wing Gundams or the EW, the same thing. Um, especially in Gundam, there's a lot of you know different Gundam series that you can start collecting and um, starting getting the Kamal kits. But one thing I find that it it's one thing to buy. A lot of them and save on shipping but it's another trying to build them all before new things are getting released and you know I've fallen into that trap a lot of times where I would buy a lot of kits from one spot to save shipping then before I know it you know next month there's a new stuff then which I want to buy more and you get to the point that um, you have, you have accumulated a lot of backlog, and the ratio of being kits being built and kits being or not being built, it's you know staggering, and you kind of question yourself, huh? Maybe I should have just bought the ones I really really like, and just keep you know I mean, if you're gonna be buying, I mean, we always want to buy the latest thing, so every month well at least for me i would always have a, a new purchase request for the new stuff but the thing is the stuff i bought uh, last month is already outdated and i probably built what well this is just a rough estimate let's say i built one of the kit out of the five this month i'm gonna have a new stuff coming in and i probably buy built only two out of the five so well, that's three out of ten in two months and that just keeps going and going and eventually I have a backlog and actually I could have I could set up a store now <laughs> with uh, a lot of kits I have backlog so that's another concern and you know lately I've just becoming more selective but still not quite enough because again I'm looking at other things to collect and again lately I've been looking into figures mainly because it doesn't require building and at the same time it's the value actually let's go on that the topic um, the value of the collection and you know little do we know that some of us do look into the value of the resale value of this um, for me I'm not really a big fan of Godzilla but I like the design and just the art or the sculpt that went into making it and I really value the figure itself and maybe down the line I'm hoping that uh, the value will go up so I can sell them and you know at, um, you make you know extra money and this is always our goal you know in life you know, make extra money so we can buy more stuff <laughs> and you know that's another reason why I collect certain things like the Godzilla also an exclusive just for that reason but also um, getting back to the mall kits there's some mall kits again sad, sadly to say build kits doesn't have much value to them it's very unfortunate and actually the unbuilt ones actually have more value because they're unbuilt and well, part of Gumpla is half of it is building the kit, the experience. That is why it's the ones that are are built unless it's a uh, nicely done, and someone are willing to pay for it. You know, that's when it has value. 
Now to give you an idea, let's say someone built a master grade. Master grades cost about forty, fifty dollars, right? And someone put, took the time, probably took them a month to complete the whole project. Uh, they've filled all the gaps, you know, make it really nice, paint it really nice. And the guy probably spent what? I would say at least, let's just say 20 hours making that whole thing ha happen. So 20 hours, that's a lot of time. That's two and a half days if you're working. Even if you're paid minimum wage, <laughs> that's what, around $200 or more for the labor to put into it. Not to mention the price of the kit and everything else. Now, who would spend $200 for a build mall kit? Right? So. That's another thing with Mol I mean Gumpla is there's no resale value once it's built. And you know it's it's, it's, it's actually kind of a shame that uh, I mean these figures are already built. How come these guys have more value later on? And some of them are actually someone built them. You can see the well, the nubs here and there and actually someone could have done a better job of building these guys. <laughs> Actually makes you wonder if these guys are a kit that you have to build. So if these guys are a kit to be built, um, I mean, yeah, that's another interesting thing. If let's say this Mega Godzilla, it's on a runner, um, and you build it, and it will look just exactly like this. Will that have a different value than this one that someone in the factory made? And that's something that. You know, we kind of have to consider. And actually, a, a, an interesting topic. I mean, two exact figures. There's that one that you have to build yourself. Which one will cost more? Right? <laughs> and uh, I know I always find that uh, quite interesting that uh, why gun, uh, you know, the Gumpla, once they're built, they don't have value anymore. Or pretty much they lost their value. <sighs> I digress. <laughs> but um and another thing is with Gumpla, I just want to point out that even if a mall kit as a particular mall kit uh, they stop making it, I always find that Bandai will always make it in the future. Um even the really old like the super deformed ones, I'm quite surprised they actually remake those and some of the ones I wanted uh if, if a few months back or a year ago, they're available now. I'm like wow. And I guess that's another reason uh, in terms of value because Bandai will always make them and they will has, always have that same price and the supply is great so there's not much demand therefore the price stays low and I guess that's one of the contributing factors unlike this guys here once they're made that's it because um, they're not gonna be I mean I mean, they could remake more of these guys, but I would think they will have moving on to newer designs and figures. And I think that's about it. Um, I do apologize if this kind of dragged on, but I just kind of want to go over a lot of uh, areas regarding figure collecting. And it's a very enjoyable hobby. I like it myself, but um, it's it really... Uh, Test your patience, <laughs> and also test your uh, how well you control yourself. And that's one thing. One of the things I've learned in this hobby is, you know, keeping my patience and putting a lot of control on oneself. And sometimes that, that takes a while, and sometimes you have to learn it too, the hard way. <laughs> All right. So I hope you guys like this segment. And again, I'm very happy that uh, the first one I had a lot of great feedback and if you have any good topics that you want to talk about that um, I myself can share something from my life through experiences and just let me know and uh, maybe I'll discuss it in my future uh, life lessons alright so there we go again this is Meets thank you for listening <laughs>